Give her another try. So as I look at the January numbers, I'm pretty pleased with them. Our sales taxes, you know, at that point was right on track. A home rule sales tax down a little bit. Local use tax, the highest it's ever been. Remember, that's your online sales. And uh, those revenue dollars have really saved us in some of these other areas that have been declining because of COVID. Income tax has stayed strong because of uh, unemployment is taxed. Uh, MFT and transportation tax is down a little bit, but not as near as bad as we had expected it to be. Obviously, for January, you'll notice video gaming uh, is only at 19620 If you remember, that would be November. So everything was shut down again mid-November, which is why that number is so low. So for February, for video gaming, there will be a zero. And then, because that would be December numbers, and then for January, we should, or for March, which would be January, we should have, um, you know, half the month or close to half the month where it, we were back open again. So we'll continue to follow those. Um, in the other sheets that I gave you when I show the comparables to last year and how we're doing, uh, you'll notice here again the local use tax is up 29% compared to what it was budgeted for. Um, so those numbers have really helped us. And income tax is up 2%, so we're happy that that's staying right where it should be. Um, on the other page, municipal sales tax, we're only down a little under 4%, so that number continues to get better as the year goes on. And same with the home rule sales tax, that's uh, down 8% from, from what's budgeted. So the numbers continue to com improve. Not that we still aren't showing a decline in revenue in other areas. Um, there's still things we need to watch, things that you wouldn't think about, um, the utility taxes, especially electric. When you have businesses that aren't open, nobody's there to use the utilities. Uh, same with water and sewer. We're running into that as we look at some of uh, Public Works revenue numbers. When you don't have businesses open, they're not there to use those, which directly reflects uh, the revenues here for the city. So we'll continue to look at that. Uh, the Cures Grant, which was the grant we gave out to the uh, businesses. I have a lot of reports due. It is the state, so I have a tremendous amount of work to do that has to be into them by Friday, so I'll be working on that a lot this week. And then we'll be discussing whether we want to apply for another round of the abandoned property grant. Um, that is due in mid-February. So right now I have um, the building department kind of scoping out what how many abandoned properties are out there and if it's worth our time to go through this grant process again and, and see if we can um, do some good work like we just did with some of the other homes um, over the last couple of years. So that's about it. If there's any questions. Questions for Ms. Tobin? I have some questions. Please proceed, Ms. Freeman. Um, so Becky, I don't see anywhere on here um, the utility tax comparables. I do not. Um, I do not have that on here. You will see that um, in the monthly spreadsheets that I give you, but I do not have it on this sheet. Could, could we start including that on these? I can. It's it's a little hard right now because if you remember, we started receiving the the NICOR municipal tax, so the gas is going to look way different from last year. I don't even have anything to compare it to because. Uh, the revenue is much higher than past years. Um, the electric is the one that I've been talking about. I can put it on here, but here again, it's hard. Um, it fluctuates from month to month and year to year based on how hot your summer is, how cold your summer is, how mild your winter is. It's one of those that's really hard to, to gauge, but I can start to include it. Okay, thank you. And then um, I had a a couple I wanted to follow up on um, the cures grant um, last week Alderman Fleury um, brought up um, about the cures grant disbursements and I think you said that they had all been handed out um, save for one um, so I think my questions are for Mayor Chamberlain um, where where do these cures grants come from state do you mean the, the the dollars where did we get the money from yeah 
So initially, it's, it came out of our general fund. That's all the paperwork that I have to turn in this week. We were approved for a $350,000 grant. It's a federal grant that's been passed through the state. So it's federal dollars that were given to the state, and then the state was to allocate to the municipalities. Okay. So they stemmed from federal, then to state, then to Belvedere recipients. Um, so how were they distributed? Were they mailed out? It depends. Most of them were actually delivered in person. Um, if we were able to and if the businesses were open, we were uh, getting in touch with the, the business owners and actually delivering them by hand. Okay, I think it would have been appropriate maybe for recipients to come to the city council and accept them um, publicly. I think the city council had a little bit at least to do with the procurement. Um, that would have been nice because I heard a nasty rumor um, that the mayor was hand delivering them accompanied by a photographer and you know I wanted to ask him that you know surely you're not going to be using these grants um, for your political ads or any type of political gain correct well I think you're out of line but I'll answer your question uh, the photographer was Miss Tobin and we went around to take them the paperwork and hand them the checks personally and those pictures are posted on the city website okay Any other questions? Yes, Alderman Porter. I wanted to ask, I heard a rumor going around that the um, some of this Cures money, like half of it, was given to businesses that do not have a business registration license or are not complying with the business registration license. And uh, I'd just like to hear a comment on that because I don't know that that's right to be giving it to companies that are not complying with our local ordinances. Becky, you want to address that? To begin with, that was not a requirement for the grant. If you go back and look at what the grant application, we needed some form of documentation. It could be a local business registration, a state, their liquor license, something that showed that they were in good standing. So we did not require that as part of the grant process. Especially with COVID going on, some of these businesses haven't been open to even think about getting their business registration through the city. So there was a, re a, a check and balance to make sure that these businesses were in good standing with the state. And a lot of them actually filled them out as they were handing in their grant application or before they received their money. So we did continue to get more business registrations as we handed out the grants. Can I push back on that a little okay. bit, Becky? Because I recall Alderman Snow specifically asking if these grant recipients were all registered with the, um, had a BRL with the city, and um, I believe it's on tape that your response was, yes, that was one of the prerequisites. And actually, no, and I had the city clerk go back and look at that, and that was not what I said. So I said we required a form of registration, whether it was state or local. Anybody else? Questions or comments? Becky, you want to proceed? That's all I have. Okay. At that point, then, we will look at the, the fire budget first for financial year 2022. Chief, Beck, and Sean, please proceed. Thank you, Ms. Tobin. This is why. Okay. Thank you. Up, uh, as you'll see up on the uh, screen there, uh, we have our mission statement, uh, which we uh, really take serious at the Belvedere Fire Department. Uh, what every word that's on there we mean it um, I'm not going to read it verbatim but there it is um, we will definitely strive to maintain a high standard of professionalism through
continuing education and training of all our members. BFD at a glance. The fire department currently operates with 30 total personnel. One chief, one administrative assistant, uh, Christine Gilman, uh, three captains, uh, one of them sitting here next to me tonight, uh, Captain Shadle, and then three lieutenants, 22 firefighter paramedics. During this past year, firefighter Mike Scarpetta retired back in May with over 26 years of uh, service. And then we were able to uh, hire his replacement, Robert Gunstein, who is a, a local talent. He came to us with excellent firefighter and paramedic skills, so he was, uh, he was ready made and he's been a really welcome addition to our department. Because of the pandemic, our training is down this year for outside type training. Um, as you can see up here, we, did, we were able to get uh, three individuals trained in the uh, safety officer certification. Uh, something's very important. It's uh, required to have a safety officer on any uh, fire scene. We're to, uh, that's, that's something that we uh, deeply believe in as well. So, um, Also, we are able to get firefighter Stephen Mead uh, his certification in fire apparatus engineer. What that basically means for uh, everybody out there is uh, he's able to drive it, uh, our fire engines and is able to uh, pump at the right pressures. Okay, um, rope operations was something a firefighter Peel got in, uh, got in this year. And then you'll see Hendrickson up there four, four separate occasions. Uh, that is because firefighter Hendrickson was our newer, one of our newer guys, uh, he went to uh, Academy and he was able to get all those certifications that you see. One of the things I do want uh, to let everybody know, um, the child safety seat technician, that's, a, that's something that we do at the fire department. Uh, two more people were um, certified in that, Hendrickson and Gunstein. Now what that is is uh, folks, or people can, our, our citizens come to our fire stations and get, make sure that their, their child safety seats are properly installed. We have numerous uh, technicians that do that. And we're, as far as I know, we're like one of the few, it may be the only fire, fire department that does that in our area. So I wanna move on to 2020 uh, and 21 the equipment building improvements. As you can see there, uh, station, up, station one upstairs remodel uh, consists of a large area, 1,700 square feet altogether. It's 85% complete. We're getting so close, and I, can't, I'm, I know all the guys are, just can't wait for this to happen, where we're getting close to move back into that area and get back to normal at station one. Station number two, the bathroom was totally remodeled. Uh, that station was built in 1975. Uh, it started showing like, its age, and we're able to totally remodel, and everyone's really pleased with that. And then this year also, we purchased uh, what I call BTAC 2, that would be Belvedere Tactical 2, uh, 2 representing the fact that it's going to be uh, stationed at Station 2. It's going to be a rapid response vehicle and expected to be in service by March of 21. I want to thank all the citizens, the mayor, and the council uh, for providing the means for these improvements. This doesn't change in the back. Our objectives pretty much remain the same. And uh, as you see, is to continue our education for our firefighters and our officers. We want to continue to upgrade our standard, standing, standard operating procedures so that we can ensure the, the best response, efficient, ensure our, our workers' safety, and then cut down the liability to the city. Then we're going to continue to upgrade and maintain our equipment and our buildings. And of course, we want to continue. This, this is always going to be there to provide excellent service that exceeds expectations. All right. Okay, uh, page one of 20, that's uh, our department budget. Um, I'll take any questions with this here. I mean, I could go, we could read it and... We'll go page by page. This is just the, is the, the summary. Gotcha. Yep. All 
Okay, thanks, Bucky. Uh, right here, uh, this is the salaries. Um, if you, you see the note there, fiscal year 22, it includes a salary for two new firefighters that were approved in the fiscal year 21 budget process, but the positions have not been filled due to COVID-19 and the shortfall in revenue. Uh, new initiatives for us this year would be see above. It's the same as last year. Uh, the hopes are that we can um, get those two firefighters at some point, um, realizing that what we have going on right now, of course, is uh, unprecedented. Uh, this pandemic is uh, it's, it's a burden to, to us all. Um, but I would like to still at some point, if, if revenue is there, I'd like to be able to get these two people on board with our department. Currently, your practice is to replace someone who retires. Correct? That's correct, yeah. Um, in May, we'll be uh, realizing that as well. We'll have three people retiring from our department, so therefore, three people will be uh, replacing them. So, uh, any questions in this for this right here? Okay. All right, page, this is page uh, three of 20, uh, overtime. Uh, one of the things that I brought to your attention last year was my 10-man uh, shift asking. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons that I felt that to get 10 people across for each shift, A, B, and C shifts, uh, would be that it would reduce overtime. And uh, I'm, I could definitely show anybody who would like to, to see those uh, kind of figures and where I, where I come up, up where I get those figures um, anytime, feel free to give me a call, um, come down and see me at the station, and I'll be happy to go over that again, just to review. Questions? So the next page is uh, page four, and it's fire pension. Um, I just so happen to have our for, foremost expert uh, in fire pensions um, with me tonight. Uh, Captain Shadle is the president of the fire pension board. And um, if anyone has any questions, this is a great time to ask right now for this guy. You can go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who is on our pension board at this time? Who are the members? Right now, actually, there's only three. It's myself, uh, Lieutenant Letourneau, and uh, retired Chief Worrell. And we're looking to fill um, two spots with uh, Ron and George leaving the board. OK, because I'd be more than happy to do that myself. All right, moving on, page five, health insurance. There's not much I can really speak on that. Yeah, if you would please, thank you. You'll notice the insurance line item has actually gone down from last year, and that's for two reasons. If you recall, we had a 2% reduction uh, that'll be in place for all of fiscal year, or calendar year 21 and 22. And also, um, per the union contract, the percentage that the em employee pays went from 12% to 14%. So the city's actually saving money, a little bit more of a burden on the employees now because they're paying a higher percentage of their premium, but that is a cost savings to the city. Next page would be uh, dental, dental insurance, page six of 20. Becky, you want to talk about that again? Okay, all right. Okay, page seven. Um, right here, this shows, uh, this is a uh, uniform allowance, and it shows us with 31 personnel. Uh, this year, the contract has gone up as far as uniform allowance, and it's at $1,250 per person. Um, as you can see in here, uh, like I said, it, the new initiative, if, if the hires happen, uh, these funds, this will be the figure, uh, and of course, if not, then it's reduced by uh, 20, what, 2,500. 
Um, one thing in there, if you guys see this, probably every year, uh, Class A uniforms, uh, that's per contract. Um, that is a $750 figure. Uh, those are the uniforms that we wear when we have uh, ceremonies and retirements and, and different functions of that sort. Any questions on uniform allowance? I have, a, I have, a, I have some questions. You okay. Know. So I like to get out last year's budget and compare these, and it's, it's hard when we get them on Friday and our meetings on Monday um, because it's a lot when we do two at a time. So I spend my weekends pouring over this stuff. Um, but last year we had 29 personnel at $1,000, and I understand that this year we have we would have 31 if we added two firefighters, but it went up to 1250 each. And then last year we allowed two Class A uniforms at 1400, and this year we're only allowing one per contract. Yes. Okay. So a couple of different things there. Uh, last year uh, we we're at one thousand dollars per. Uh, per, uh, per individual, and then this year contractually, um, they're awarded $250 more. Okay, so that's why that figure is that. Um, the Class A uniforms, that that's dictated by how many personnel um, we might have had two new guys last year, which that was the case, and so both of them guys would get Class A uniforms. This year we just have one new guy, so therefore it'd be just one. Uh, $750 expense for a Class A uniform. Okay. 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 I have a question. Yes. Please proceed. Um, it's about the uniforms. Um, do they have to give you their receipts after they buy it and they get reimbursed? Or how does that work? Or do they get paid first? Hi, Wendy, this is Captain Shadle. So okay. as far as that, it was negotiated to be uh, paid as a cash payment. Um, as far as administration, we would have preferred to have it done as a reimbursement, and, um, but that's just not how it came out at the end. Okay, because I, I, it's not with the fire department, but I've heard that people have gotten their money for allowance for uniform allowance, and then they don't have a uniform. So they're pocketing the money. No, no, get that. Yeah. yeah, so they, they get the money exactly. up front, all right? And it's up, it's up to the leaders of the department and the people themselves who are, are fire members to uh, make sure they, they police themselves as far as how they, they look and appear. So um, it's up to myself too uh, to make sure that my officers are, are keeping our guys looking uh, professional in appearance and their uniforms are nice and crisp and, and clean and as well thank you and new so because it keeps them accountable okay thank you well, I certainly do so you can ask them all <laughs> any, Anything any else? other questions on this item on this page no that's it thank you okay. thank you Alderman Frank Okay, page uh, eight of 20. Uh, this is the training line. Um, if we have any questions here, uh, I, I, once again, Captain Shadel is our training coordinator for the Belvedere Fire Department, and he is here to answer any type of question you might have for training. I, I had one for that. Please proceed, Alderman Freeman. So Captain Shadel, um, last year you budgeted the exact same amount as this year for training. So I'm assuming that you included the two new um, firefighters on your initiative for training last year, and then you didn't need to use that money since you didn't get those two, and that's why um, you're assuming you may get them this year, so that's why that number remained the same? That's true, too. I mean, we had a... Hotel meals and mileage is largely due to outside certification training and um, specialty training. And so last year as well, there was a halt put 
to that in March. And so there was some savings there for sure. Um, to keep it the same, yeah, we didn't ask for an increase this year, but it does incorporate um, new firefighters going to academy and also uh, new paramedics going to paramedic school. And then specialty training, we are reimbursed a lot for certain different types of specialty training through MABIS, and that's just those classes, sometimes they come up each year, sometimes they don't, sometimes we get into them and sometimes we don't. So it's, a, it's largely a, a variable expense, and we just try and predict, and um, that's why we're just keeping it the same this year. Okay, so if you end up not getting two new firefighters again this year, um, because I don't know that we're out of the COVID woods quite yet, um, then that that would probably be a high number. Uh, not necessarily. I see where you're coming from, but it depends too with retirements. And so, I mean, that's very variable as well. We we know of of one, but we expect potentially three. And so, if we have um, just new firefighters that come into the fire department, they would potentially have to go to academy, but they might already be certified and they wouldn't have to. So again, it's, it's pretty variable and it's just a best estimate. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Alderman Frank, please proceed. Okay, is this training just for new hires or is it for uh, training for other firefighters as well? It is across the board for everyone, but the largest expense is academy and paramedic school. But uh, other outside training, just like FAE, um, to get certified drivers and pumpers. And um, as people move through their career, they get more advanced training, advanced firefighter. Uh, and then they go into company officer and then advanced fire officer and uh, things like that. And then the specialty rescue. So it's to answer your question directly, it is for new and existing firefighters and officers. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on. Okay, moving on. Uh, page 9 of 20, this is repair and maintenance of buildings. As you can see up there, uh, two items are double asterisked. Uh, last year, uh, I chose not to uh, do the tuck pointing on the window sills at fire station number one. Uh, just because of things that are going on right now, I think we could have got, we were able to get by without having that happen. Uh, if you happen to go by and, and, and go down that alley next to our station one, uh, you'll notice that they are in need of repair. And so uh, eventually this has to take, take place or we'll be losing our window sills on a, on a building that is really got good bones, structurally sound, and a, and a lot of work has been put into it. So that's gonna happen at some point. The other double asterisk that I have there is mainly for the concrete. Um, this is, this is going to be a repair of concrete at both station number one and station number two. Uh, it, it's becoming uh, somewhat of a hazard. Uh, we got too late in the season to uh, be able to do anything about it this year. And so hopefully next spring, if we can hopefully get moving on this and get those repairs done before um, we have maybe an accident out in front of one of our stations due to people walking. Uh, street or you know sidewalk traffic so um, let's see is anyone got any questions pertaining to this particular line item I, I just wanted to ask um, the garage doors garage heaters um, we just got a new garage heater um, how are our garage doors in need of replacement I thought we got a new garage door too yeah, uh, good or is question. Is that line item pretty much taken care of, other than the maintenance part? Yeah, the the maintenance. There's there's things that take place uh, when you're when you're talking about garages and garage heaters. Um, we have right now. I think we have five five of the large garage heaters. Uh, they are all getting up there in age, so we're anticipating some more. You know, to where they might need repair and or service. Um, the garage doors. You're right, we have, if you see the lovely garage doors we have down at Station 1, I'm so thrilled about. Um, those are brand new, 
Station 2, those are brand new as well. So I don't anticipate having any more garage door needs unless of, of course, an accident. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on this page? Alderman Rivolo. I don't know if it pertains to this line item, but what I see there's signs next to the fire station. Is there a possibility, possibility and feasible to expand the fire station, fire station one? It's um, those two uh, buildings next to us are, are for sale. And um, that would be something uh, obviously not in this, in this era right now of the pandemic, but that's something we should definitely as a council should be looking at to, uh, for expansion down there. Uh, we are, we've kind of overgrown that, that building. Um, it's difficult to get uh, a, the command vehicle in there and an engine. Um, looking to have that ladder 150 uh, would, would be a great uh, potential for it to be downtown would be a, a better suited for a ladder truck. Um, but yeah, that, there's two businesses right next there, uh, right next to us that would be a welcome addition to our department for the long you know long haul in the future. So definitely. Uh, today, you know, if, if people uh, would see, you know, if you look it up and you can see where uh, when people, when municipalities build fire department or fire stations, they're millions and millions of dollars. Uh, some of your cheaper ones are like $5 million and that's a simple pole building, you know, with a little bit of brick. Um, they can go up to $12 million. So the opportunity to expand downtown would be a great Great thing for us, and I bet we could, you know, do it for much less than that. Uh, build, construct a you know, firehouse. Remodeling. Um, I was just curious because I've been seeing it for the past week, and just I thought it was just right. It's located right next to each other, and best to expand. And it's right next to the river too for better training. Yep. No, we, go ahead. Yes, please do. Chief Heiser and I've been talking about that a, a little bit as a opportunity to acquire those interest rates are exceptionally low. There's definitely a need for space at the fire department and it would allow us to have some different um, manning and operational. It's centrally, centrally located. So we're considering adding a, you know, with the chief's initiative three response vehicle and a, and a command vehicle. One possibility, which is not a possibility right now is running that from station one. There's also uh, cramped living quarters and there's really, even in station one right now, we have a utility truck parked up against gear lockers. And then um, we have at the other station, it's completely full of, of rigs too, which is not a bad problem to have, but there, we're definitely having some, some growing pains. Um, one consideration as well is um, uh, being prepared to handle um, space-wise females in the fire service. We have some on our current list, and right now we all sleep together in a not a real big room, sometimes five of us with no um, borders or separation or anything like that. So um, I have talked with Chief Heiser uh, uh, about that and, and put a bug in his ear. It, it might be a good opportunity to get those to help those businesses out and sell because there's probably not a lot of movement in real estate right now and also provide an opportunity for future growth um, and interest rates being as, as low as they are in those properties compared to the relative cost of fire stations are low and then also not to mention uh, the central location right there is um, very good for response times and if we could have a second response vehicle there instead of south of town I would choose that so th thanks for uh, bringing that up and thanks for allowing me to speak. You yep. Any questions for repair and maintenance of buildings? Okay, page 10 of 20, uh, repair and maintenance equipment. Um, this, is, this is the uh, annual equipment testing. Uh, we have to, per NFPA, they. They want us to have ladders and hose tested yearly. Um, 
our, our air compressor that we use, that's the, the compressor, that particular compressor is what fills our air packs that, we're, that we use to go into uh, fire situations or hazmat situations. Um, this also includes fire extin uh, extinguisher testing, um, annual testing and repair of SCBAs and breathing air, air compressor. We have to have that done each year to maintain uh, certification. Uh, for quality air that's going into our air packs and our air bottles. Does anyone have any questions on this page here, line item 620? I do, Al. So I noticed that last year this um, line item went up by 20.72%, and this year it's going up again by 52.71%. So over the last two years, it has technically increased by seven over 72%. Is there a reason for that huge increase um, for maintenance on these? Yeah, um, Alderman, uh, ever since I took over, we've been trying to, like, what I call streamline uh, our budget items. And um, that's just us moving, we're moving figures around to best put them into the areas that they belong, if that answers your question. Yeah, so they've been moved from uh, from other line items into this one. Yes, okay. that's correct. Yeah, and then that's been an ongoing uh, endeavor of ours, of me and my administrative assistant. Um, we continue to work on that. We think that we're getting into a good spot right now in a good place uh, to where not much movement should occur uh, from this point forward. Never okay. can say never, but uh, the possibility always exists, but it should be pretty calm. Any other questions? Repair and maintenance equipment. We're now on page 11, uh, repairs and maintenance to vehicles. Uh, this, this one here includes an, the annual testing of our vehicles such as our aerial ladder and then the pumps, uh, repairs to our vehicles, and repairs to pumps, and this is for new tires as well. Uh, we have stayed with this figure of $55,000 uh, because of uh, the extreme cost in fixing uh, trucks, uh, and also because of the age of two of our engines uh, that we're gonna try and limp to the finish line. A 1992 Sutphin, uh, old engine 101, and then 2002 American LaFrance, engine number 102. So uh, both of those are, are long in the tooth. I've mentioned this uh, numerous times in, in this council chambers uh, that those are uh, getting to the, their end. And as I stated before, numerous times that um, most, like these, these rigs, if they're on, our, on some other departments, they would not even be in, in function right now. They'd be put put out the pasture um, we have we're very fortunate to have a, a new uh, two a two-year-old Alexis uh, engine 101 and um, we have the 2011 uh, ladder 150 uh, both of those are relatively new vehicles in, in terms of fire service um, we're trying to uh, not necessarily preserve 150 but in, in a sense I am um, those that ladder 150 was purchased uh, about $700,000, I believe. And today, that figure will probably be well over a million dollars to replace that. So, uh, any questions in the vehicle page? Moving on. Page 12, telephone utilities, uh, 60, uh, 6200 line item. Uh, is anyone have any questions pertaining to this? Alderman Freeman. 
So Captain Shadel here. I, this kind of goes back to one of your other questions about the one light item that went up so much. If you notice, uh, this particular light item uh, since physical year 20 it went down by about $5,000, and the repairs and maintenance of radios and tablets was moved to that other line item, and that's why that one increased, but you will notice a decrease in that one. I just wanted to uh, show you the other side of that. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on here, uh, page 13, physicals. I have not much to say about this other than that they're, they're mandated. Anything to add to that or no? Really, we generally don't spend all of this line item, but we budget for it just in anticipation. Okay, moving on. Okay, this is a, a difficult year for us in the fire prevention, uh, not in, in, uh, in terms of spending the money that we had allocated to this, to this very important uh, line item, fire prevention and education. Uh, this year, we're gonna come way under our 12,000 that we had allocated uh, last year, uh, simply, simply because of the pandemic and not being able to get into the schools, so therefore, a lot of that stuff had to be done in, in the firehouse and online and through uh, YouTube videos. Correct in that assumption? YouTube? Yeah, yeah. yeah I can Please do. add a little bit. Um, One of the largest initiatives that we have for fire prevention is our second grade program piloted by, at the time, Lieutenant Heiser. And uh, what we do is we actually uh, teach fire safety and have all the second graders uh, district-wide um, know what to do in a fire. Uh, we get them, give them an incentive to check their smoke detectors at home. We usually have quite a few, uh, like hundreds of detector checks and things like that. Um, but we provide the material to the teachers in the schools. Um, and so that is a large expense, all that material we get from NFPA and uh, provide that to them. Um, the other more expensive uh, education opportunity is our open house, which we obviously couldn't have this year. So we have a large crowd come to that and one of our initiatives and the reason for having the open house, one of the main ones is, is for the fire safety education and we provide a lot of material for that. And so um, that also wasn't purchased this year due to COVID. So um, hopefully next year we can uh, kick those initiatives off right, right where we left off the year before. And so we would anticipate that we would use the money allocated the same. Any questions on that line item, fire prevention education? Uh, we're going to move on to uh, page 15, uh, emergency medical services. This is a line item that we had put in in fiscal year 18 uh, because of the fact that we do so much in the area of, of emergency medical. Um, so we felt we needed to uh, have its own line item. Captain Dave Burdick is our EMS coordinator. Uh, Dave does a tremendous job with, with this line item. Um, he uh, seeks seeks grants, he looks for uh, specials and deals, and uh, he's very frugal, and uh, I like Dave for that. So, that not on? Okay, all right. So, um, there's no increase in this. Uh, even though the uh, COVID, uh, the pandemic, a uh, lot, of, lot of supplies were needed. However, we've been through uh, FEMA, we've been able to get a lot of those supplies through them. So therefore, uh, not, not to an expense to the city. So, does anyone have any questions in the EMS line? Okay. Moving on to page number 16, office supplies. And I have Captain Shadle for this one as well. He's uh, a lot. Of, a lot of this stuff is uh, IT support and software and the subscriptions and stuff. Uh, we brought that it, uh, in. You want to comment on anything? Unless anyone have any questions? 
No? I guess. Okay, we're good. One highlighter, heads up if, if you guys would notice, um, software licensing that you see from 20 to this year to the next year, a large increase, and that's due to our main database and reporting software is moving to the cloud, and we're not really going to have a choice because it's not being supported uh, the other way as a standalone program as Firehouse as we um, run it now. It's working though and, and serving our needs well, so I, I've been holding off on making that transition. But once we make the transition to the cloud, it's going to be a lot more expensive to do that. And I mean, initial estimates are like $2,500 previous for updates and supports to uh, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars annually. So, just as a heads up, that's something that's just where technology is driving us, and then the cost. To, to do that and when that time comes I'll definitely answer any questions but there's a little bit of that is is built in so when we have to do that we'll be able to I had a question go ahead Marcia so um, last year we had it um, highlighted that we did target solution membership dues, which were new in the fiscal year 2020 of $3,100, and the ESO Firehouse Software annual fee also for $1,700, and then um, hashtag Google 1600 Active 911 400 Microsoft 300 Adobe 200 and Vipri 350. So are, are, is that still all included in this as well? Yes, yep, everything that's included. So Target Solutions is our training tracking um, platform. Uh, helps us uh, with compliance with the state and also ISO and categorizing training and putting it in different credentials that it counts for and things like that. Um, Google G Suite is our uh, email and productivity so uh, software. Viper is our um, security. Um, you had mentioned a couple others. I can't remember off the top of my head, but all of those are the same and uh, still included, yes. Okay, thank you. Any more questions on that line on item? <coughs> okay, moving to uh, page 17, uh, gas and oil. Uh, that's pretty much uh, whatever the, uh, the market bears. Um, 20,000 is typically what we do here. Uh, if you look back uh, history-wise, it, it's pretty much around that figure. Uh, with the exception of fiscal year 17, where it's like 5,000, over $5,000 less, but usually that's right where we're at. Questions? Okay. Moving to page 18, operating supplies. This is uh, one that is pretty much entails cleaning supplies and uh, batteries and light bulbs and you name it things that we need at the firehouses uh, to, for you know small maintenance and and what have you um, some meetings on on occasion if we have like different uh, agencies come in uh, we, we might have uh, food for them there uh, because they just reciprocating um, it's about it does anyone have any questions pertaining to this line item Operating supplies. Well, just to just to reciprocate on that, um, w the city pays for food for meetings and and training and cakes for ceremonies and as such. But um, for the public, the firefighters pay for their own meals when they're there on their um, 24, 48, 36 hour shifts, whatever they whatever they have. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. 24 hour shifts. Uh, is what, what we do, uh, the guys do uh, pay for their own. That's definitely uh, something uh, we get uh, questions about that. Um, but the guys are, uh, that's out of their pocket, the meals. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions in operating supplies? Okay, moving to uh, page uh, 19, miscellaneous expense. Um, this is one that's been there uh, when I took over. Uh, it's a, it's a, a 
miscellaneous expense. I guess, you know, like some things that we didn't realize we need, and uh, that's what I, I'll use that for. So, any questions on this one here? Moving to page 20 of 20, equipment, line item 8200. Uh, $25,000, we've had that uh, in the last uh, four fiscal year budgets. Uh, this year, uh, the PPE, uh, I just want everyone to realize that uh, that's the coat and the pants and the gloves and the helmets. Uh, those are uh, large expenditures. Um, if somebody was to uh, wreck their clothes or wreck their, pant their coats and their pants uh, in a fire situation, we're looking at an expenditure of $2,500. Um, a lot of times we can recoup that through an insurance, uh, through the uh, people's insurance. But just know that that stuff is ex extremely expensive and as it well should be as far as, it's stuff that guys, we go in into a uh, thousand degree heat and this is the kind of equipment that uh, we need. So it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, got some other uh, items in here, fire hose replacement. One of the things about fire hose right now with our fire department is our fire hose is relatively new. I think it's uh, only four years old. So fire hose has a long um, life expectancy. It's, um, it's extremely expensive when you do go out and get it, but uh, right now we're doing really well in that, in that area. So, any questions on equipment? Yeah. <laughs> so I know I asked you about this last year, but if you could just do a little refresher on the shared equipment cost with 2% fund, what's that all about? Uh, the 2% fund is it's an international fund that, that we, uh, I'm probably gonna have Shadel or Captain Shade will expect on the 2% part of it. But, um, you know, might as well start now. Go ahead. Just do it. All right, the 2% fund is uh, a fund. Um, insurance, out-of-state insurance companies, fire insurance, that they reimburse to the city and the city. Uh, it's all regulated through the state on how it's set up and handled in the board and how it's handled, but it's essentially made up of a board of fire department members, including the chief, and they're able to purchase needed equipment that um, maybe it comes up, maybe it's something that wasn't budgeted for, or some specialty equipment that the fire department believes that they need. And so, Becky, you would know exactly, usually it's around 30 or 35,000 on average annually. Between 30 and 40, sometimes a little bit more. It just depends right in there. But yeah, once a year we receive a check from IML, from Illinois Municipal League, who manages the 2% the fund. And um, it has a breakdown of every single dollar that came from every insurance company. Um, it's a, you know, the document's quite large, but um, it has a check that goes directly to the 2% fund. Yep, and so they have meetings and uh, purchase equipment and things like that. And one of the things that the 2% board and the chief like to do is um, when equipment is needed and maybe it's really expensive and they say, hey, we'll, we'll do half if you'll do half. And so we're able to uh, do it that way so there's uh, less of a burden on the city's budget, but we're able to get some needed equipment. And so... Uh, that money, whatever comes up or is voted on, that's it's, so that ten thousand dollars. If Chief Heiser uh, used that whole thing, we'd be getting twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment. Thank you for refreshing my memory on that. Okay. Any other uh, uh, questions on equipment? Okay. Moving to. Uh, the five-year capital expenses, correct. As you can see, uh, vehicles, uh, fire engine, uh, engine 101, our newest, our newest apparatus, um, payment number six to seven will, will take place this year. And then the final payment for that will be next year, fiscal 23. So... And I have up here also in uh, fiscal year 24, uh, our proposed new engine um, 
that uh, I was speaking of earlier. Uh, right now we have, we're actually using a 1992 engine as well as a 2002. It depends on which one is, um, you know, is doing well at that time. We're, we do have, a, they're in the shop um, quite often. And we're, like I said, I'm hoping to uh, get it to the finish line. They're both very capable of pumping. It's just all the little, little things like a window might, a window crank might break. And we're talking about uh, vehicles that are 30 or 20 and 30 years old, respectively. And the parts are hard to come by. So, the, uh, if anyone had any questions about the, uh, the engines, um, I'd like to, you know, go ahead and talk more about it if you want to. Anybody? Okay. Yes, so you, you'll be going with the same brand, Alexis? Um, Alexis, Alexis has been really good uh, for us, okay? Um, the, uh, it'd probably be up to who will be in administration during that time. So in a couple of years, you never know. So um, I wouldn't want to comment on that other than the fact that I, I think it's a, a wonderful uh, manufacturer. Manufacturer, it's a, a manufacturer that's here and been around since 1947. They're here right in Illinois, and um, they've been really good to us. Uh, if we have if we have problems. Um, I am, I'm on a first name basis with them, and they come up and take care of our problems. So, but good piece of apparatus. I just had a question about the uh, um, capital expenses. Okay. So last week, um, I asked you about the um, Office of State Fire Marshal Small Equipment Grant Program that you um, said that you guys had applied for, and that's up to $26,000, and then you indicated to me that you've also applied for the Assistance to Firefighters Grant, as well as the Firehouse Subgrant. Yes. So um, we're hopeful, right, that we can get some of these grants to help cover some of these um, items that you have under your capital expense um, in the equipment column, correct? That's correct, yeah. Like we, we were talking about last week, um, the extrication <laughs> hydraulic tools, uh, those are the ones. We're definitely hoping that that comes through for us, as I had stated, that um, Fire Marshal Matt Perez indicated that the upper half of the state should be uh, receiving these, these funds, and uh, I'm really very optimistic that that's going to occur for us. So as you see there, applied for the small or the state fire marshal small equipment grant. So that is uh, definitely a hope. Um, do you want to care about the AF? Yeah. Alderman Freeman, this is Captain Shadle. We are regionally applying for an AFG grant. Um, I hope to have it done. The deadline's coming up uh, the middle of February, but it's countywide. So we're trying on the 911 board to shore up some communications issues in the county and one of the possible solutions is going to Starcom radios. Uh, police is currently on Starcom radio. It's a digital radio instead of an older analog um, voice radio and that would only be for dispatch but to answer your question about how it applies to this, that particular grant is none of the equipment on here is related to that. Um, I've estimated that countywide it would cost about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to upgrade that equipment and that's what the grant is uh, the AFG grant for this year that uh, we're working on as a, a countywide so it's our our department and then the three other uh, fire districts and then Cape and Rescue is uh, working on that and then uh, the 911 board has also talked about helping with the cost share portion of that and so that's it's unrelated, but it is another grant that we're working on, but it's, it's not related to these radios we're talking about here, are just uh, analog VHF radios to get our radios back up to a number where each member can have a radio. A few years back, it's maybe 2015 now, that uh, we came in and we were at a, had a problem of needing a lot of radios and the price went from a few hundred dollars to 
two to four to six thousand dollars, depending on what type of radio that that we went with. And at that time, we got only enough radios to put one in the vehicle seats. And so the guys used to, and police officers do, uh, get issued a radio. And there's there's many benefits to that. And so um, what we've asked in this part of the capital uh, equipment for radios is that over the next three years, um, we found a suitable radio for $2,000 and um, it's a good radio it meets our needs it allows us to work with our gloved hands um, it's not the extra rugged firefighting radio which is those are four thousand each but uh, we've found that this will meet our needs and we'd be able to get a radio into the hands of each firefighter which means if they come in for a recall they'll have a radio they don't have to find one off a vehicle um, if they do outside training they'll have a radio and uh, things like that but as far as the grant it's not related to those radios up there okay and, and then the, the firehouse sub grant is would that help out at all it, it certainly yeah it certainly could um, if Firehouse sub, uh, as you probably well know, it's a, it's a sandwich maker, okay? And uh, they do, they give out a lot of, uh, I believe they're around $10,000 grants. So um, we could certainly, uh, we're in the running for something like that as well. Okay? Okay, oh, thank you. Anything else? Okay. No, that's, that's all I have on that. Okay, uh, technology needs, station alerting system. Um, I put this in here because of the possibility that it might exist. And again, this is a lot of stuff interwoven. Right, so a lot of this is driven by our dispatch center. So just like our radios, our VHF, our alerting right now is done by VHF, which is analog, not to get too technical into it, but at dispatch, a sound is played over a radio, and then our uh, stations and our pagers uh, hear that, and the, what sends that to our phone hears those things. Uh, technology, obviously, that's old technology, and what most places are going to, and it um, allows for more redundancy and interoperability is a system that works over internet or fiber with the VHF being a backup. So we've, uh, Winnebago County has done this and um, McHenry County, so our surrounding counties have already done this. But for us, if the dispatch center decides to go to this, this is what in anticipation, just the box itself for each station, which we have to, to receive is around $20,000. And so that the additional costs would be for message boards, um, maps that come up when the call comes in. Uh, one service side of the new alerting system and why I hope that dispatch goes through with it soon is it will reduce the response time. Right now when a 911 call comes in, the person listens on the phone, right? And you call and they, they have to talk to the person. And then and if there's another team dispatcher who can pick up and dispatch us right away, they can do that. But if not, the person has to continue and then our dispatch is a voice so it is very possible that it's a one two minute they yeah. have to wait for the phone call was there some beep or did i miss something someone leave somebody either got off the phone or okay um so it will reduce the time because what happens is when they punch it in and hit send it could be instantly, and then the voice that comes over is actually an automated voice. It's not the dispatcher, so it'll free up the dispatchers from doing that. So say uh, someone's not breathing, they'd literally hit the address, someone's not breathing, and hit the button, and that would be literally like a 10-second dispatch, and we're notified, we'd get notified throughout our station, and then on our phones and tablets and the, the rigs. So that's a possible anticipated expense, but there's a lot of moving parts. If that happens, it would be countywide as well. And uh, finally, then infrastructure needs. I have on here re-roof station number one. That'd be the administration side. That's the side that we're presently doing all the remodeling in upstairs. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Letourneau and Firefighter Draw have been really uh, involved in that, as well as some other guys, too. But 
um, that that side of the, uh, the uh, station, that roof, is in need of repair. So we'll we'll probably analyze it again this this spring, uh, look at it and see um, if we can if we can get through another year, we possible. But um, I think uh, according to the roofing uh, the experts, they're saying that it's it's time. So any questions on our capital? Mira, that's all I have then. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, most informative. Hi, Alderman Brereton. Alderman Brereton, you have the floor. Please proceed. Thank you. I just had a quick question for Chief Heisler and uh, Captain Shadle. If, if you were really pressed to make any cuts to this fire budget, which item or items would come to mind first? Right, you know, looking uh, initial at, at first glance, I'd probably um, probably get through with the roof again, uh, potentially for the infrastructure. Um, that would that be uh, twenty five thousand dollars that we're referring to. So that that's one that I would look at right there. Uh, there's some other areas that we potentially could look at. Okay, did. Thanks, Chief. Did uh, did Captain Shadle have anything to add? Hi, Alderman Burton. Um, honestly, without really digging into that a little more, just off the top of my head, I really wouldn't be able to give you a good answer. And I hate to say that, but I would want to not say something and have it not be right. I would want to definitely look into that. And because a lot of times there's other ramifications, and sometimes some of these expenditures are... Are, I mean, everything is optional if there's not money there, but some of them you might not be able to avoid. And um, so I would definitely want to look into that if it, the time came and the budget came to a situation where we had to make cuts. I'd definitely want to be thoughtful about it and, you know, do research before I would jump into that. Yeah, thank you. I just wondered anything off the top of your head, and uh, thank you guys for the presentation. Thank you. Ms. Tobin, did you have a comment? I was just going to say with fire and as well as all the other budgets, what you're going to find um, being a, a government entity and a public servant, most of, your sal most of your budgets are salaries and benefits. So the fire department, I just calculated it, almost 95% of their budget is salaries, um, the pension, the health insurance, the uniforms, the training. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. When we start talking about cuts, you know, most of the time we're going to be talking about people. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. And we'll move on now to the financial year 2022 police budget. Chief Whitty, you have the floor. Hey, just a heads up, Alderman Snow is on the phone right now. Oh, hi, Dan. How are you? Terry, any change? No. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can everybody uh, at, at home hear me okay? Yes. yes. Perfect. Yes, I can hear you. Great. So uh, uh, the uh, mission statement from the police department, I'm not going to read it verbatim. Uh, the Cliff Notes version is uh, we strive to provide a safe community with professional service. Uh, moving on to 2020-21 uh, accomplishments, uh, our community policing program. Uh, provided uh, uh, numerous, numerous uh, pallets of uh, food uh, through the Feed the Need program. I know we've talked about that several times here at, at City Council through either updates or uh, uh, donations, so on and so forth, uh, providing food to local pantries and churches. 
Uh, we've also, uh, through the Feed the Need program, expanded to include four mobile food pantries, uh, which uh, assisted with num numerous others. Uh, Police Department partnered with the YMCA once again uh, for our summer youth outreach out there at uh, uh, Highline and Tobine area. Uh, where uh, uh, during the week uh, they were out there providing uh, meals to kids and uh, fire department was out there as well and, and the police department uh, interacting with uh, those in the community. Uh, numerous lives were saved from uh, drug overdoses through our Narcan program. Uh, our lateral hiring process was initiated and you heard a little bit about that earlier tonight. Uh, COSAP grant was applied for and received through the Department of Justice uh, we are uh, putting the finishing touches on the uh, intergovernmental agreement and should be bringing that to you uh, here in the near future. Uh, police department experienced and dealt with as uh, pretty much everybody else, uh, not only in our community but nationwide, corona mitigation collaboration uh, with the health department, Boone County Sheriff's Department and Boone County EMA. Uh, purchase of body-worn uh, cameras uh, with the assistance and approval of the City Council. And uh, uh, as we saw, uh, great interest through the uh, community uh, as uh, evident by the donations that we received for that. Uh, uh, we are uh, looking to continue our patrol remodel and uh, are putting together additional uh, uh, options for that and looking for different uh, funding um, uh, options as well. Reviewed, revised, and updated all of our department policies. Uh, Sergeant Ball, Officer Schwartz, Officer Schutz, Kaplan Weiland received life-saving awards for the rescue of a woman uh, from the Kishwaukee River. Officer Parker received a Valor uh, Service Award for his efforts uh, during this rescue. Uh, I was uh, also uh, notified that he's been uh, contacted by uh, uh, the uh, American Red Cross and they're looking at uh, providing him potentially uh, with a, uh, an award as well. So uh, hopefully we will be uh, uh, bringing you information about that here in the uh, near future. New hires for the police department. Uh, Officer Anthony Jones was hired on March 27th of 2020. And Officer Jonathan Lurch was hired on July 22nd, 2020. Officer Jones has just recently uh, graduated our uh, field training processes and currently in solo patrol. So uh, that uh, we're extremely happy uh, for him and with him and, and look for, for great things. Uh, Officer Lurch is uh, still in the uh, FTO process. And then uh, objectives going forward for the police department. Uh, there's been objectives that uh, have been on uh, uh, last year's uh, objectives as well and with uh, uh, COVID uh, preventing us from being able to implement some of these, uh, they may seem, uh, uh, you, you may have uh, remembered them from last year. Uh, the Belvedere Police Department coordinating a public education program on BPD use of force. I think it's very important for us to be able to educate uh, uh, the community and hopefully bring some uh, perspective and context to uh, when and why force is used and ultimately uh, you know, uh, answer some of those tough questions. So that's something that uh, I would look forward to in the future and as soon as we're, we're able to get back to a, a little bit of normalcy, uh, uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, multi Multicultural uh, Citizens Police Academy is planned. Deputy Chief Wallace is working with uh, uh, Alerta and uh, one of our police commissioners is uh, trying to, to coordinate uh, that with uh, different groups uh, within the community so we can uh, reach out and, and hopefully uh, be able to provide some information about our department to uh, other areas uh, within our community that maybe uh, have gone underrepresented in the past. Uh, the police department will host an open house. We'll follow in the uh, footsteps of the fire department, see what, uh, uh, how um, much of a success that is with uh, the community. You know, we want to uh, kind of uh, resemble that and uh, just uh, bring people into the public safety building, show them around. And uh, I, I know uh, on uh, smaller uh, stages uh, we have uh, 
you know, uh, kids and, and parents and, and different groups come through and they always seem to enjoy it, so we want to kind of expand that as well. Uh, the uh, community policing program has uh, actually gone into the high school and uh, presented to some of the uh, uh, students there. Uh, again, uh, kind of like a community or citizens police academy for high school age kids. And that, that was uh, received well and something we're looking forward to doing uh, uh, again in the future. And then uh, COSAP, uh, expansion of outreach prevention of substance abuse, domestics and mental health. For those of you that remember and for those of you that don't, uh, the COSAP grant is uh, what the police department is uh, currently um, working with the Boone County uh, Health Department as well as the uh, Boone County Mental Health Task Force uh, trying to provide through a grant uh, provided by the uh, Department of Justice to uh, provide a police officer, a veteran police officer uh, to the uh, Boone County Health Department and to be proactive in providing some of that uh, outreach uh, as it pertains to uh, drug abuse, uh, mental health uh, uh, issues, and domestic violence. So we look forward to the uh, council's uh, uh, reviewing that information and hopefully uh, uh, their approval of that grant uh, going forward. Is there any questions uh, about that? Pretty straightforward so far. So if there's no questions, we'll go ahead and uh, move forward to uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this year's budget. Uh, page one, I would like to uh, point out for everything that doesn't necessarily pertain to uh, employee, employee wages, or, or anything having to do with uh, um, contractual or union uh, type of expenditures, uh, the police department is uh, showing a uh, reduction in, in overall budget of $6,811. Some of those uh, uh, costs are outside of our control. Uh, as I explained, kind of the, uh, uh, you know, the wages that are set by contract and uh, some of the associated costs with, uh, uh, with the uh, em employees. So. so moving on, if there's no questions, uh, page 2 of 20, salaries. So hopefully... Uh, for those who are not in attendance, you got an email uh, sent uh, uh, sometime today. I apologize for it uh, being last minute, but uh, it's something that we've been putting together. So if you wouldn't mind uh, referring to it, it says salary comparisons of administrative assistant positions. Uh, I just wanted to bring some awareness to this area. This is not something uh, that the police department beyond what the uh, city uh, is already planning on for uh, wage increases. Uh, but with the uh, leaving of Michelle Mitchell, who was our administrative assistant for investigations, that caused uh, me and my command staff to um, post and uh, hire uh, a new employee. And in the process of doing that, uh, we found it uh, somewhat difficult uh, in terms of wages to uh, uh, attract, uh, well, uh, we speculated that the wages as they were uh, may not necessarily attract the quality uh, personnel that we were hoping for. We, uh, we actually uh, um, hit a home run with Maria Casas who uh, ended up applying and has been a great fit. Uh, but it, uh, it caused me to wonder what the comparisons were out there for administrative assistance. So we did some research to see if, uh, you know, my speculation was, uh, was right or wrong, plain or simple. Uh, and so the research that we found is listed in this uh, document that I passed out to those that are in attendance and emailed to those that are at home just to give you an idea of what some of the surrounding agencies are paying their administrative assistance specifically. And this is really to help just provide some perspective uh, going forward for future budgets uh, that maybe the uh, city may want to address just to make sure that we're gonna be competitive 
uh, with other agencies and, and get the best personnel that we possibly can uh, when you know those openings do come up uh, and crunching the numbers that uh, we found uh, the median salary for administrative assistance is forty one thousand one hundred and sixty two dollars our uh, administrative assistance we just hired Maria at thirty three thousand two hundred and eighty dollars the uh, next administrative assistant who is uh, Judy Terramina who has uh, about 10 or 11 years on the job makes just over that at thirty three thousand four hundred and sixty seven dollars now uh, uh, Sandy Daniels who's been here 27 years uh, makes uh, more than that but again, uh, I stress she's been here 27 years. She makes $53,815. Now, it sounds like a lot, but uh, again, when you look at some of these uh, uh, comparables, it, it really is uh, not really in the ballpark. And Cherry Valley is the lowest comparable that uh, is on this list. And our administrative assistants, Judy and Maria, are 6% below them. They are, if you look at just the median, they're 24% below the median salary. So uh, I, again, uh, I present this to you simply uh, for awareness uh, going forward. I, it may be something that, uh, you know, uh, talking with uh, the finance director, maybe we can come up with some outside the box uh, ways of addressing this disparity and uh, hopefully uh, in the future bring something to the uh, council that uh, is palatable. It, trust me, uh, I know trying to uh, address such a large um, gap is not something we're going to be able to do all at once. Uh, but uh, I, I would ask that going forward, just uh, you know, uh, come in with an open mind. This, this year is obviously not the year uh, with COVID and the uncertainties financially. Uh, but going forward, uh, you know, um, uh, I present to you just to uh, take this into consideration and, and food for thought. So is there any questions on any of that information that I've presented so far? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. So you, um, you didn't include the entry level pay for the Boone County Sheriff's Department, which I think is our most comparable um, out of all these other departments. And or if I'm reading this right, after 22 years with the Boone County Sheriff's Department, the um, salary would be $41,653 after 22 years? That is absolutely correct. And definitely something if I worked for the uh, Sheriff's Department, I'd be taking a look at and bringing uh, uh, before the appropriate uh, finance committee. Uh, but in terms of the entry level pay, uh, yes. If somebody uh, can point me in the right direction to get that information, uh, I, I would be more than willing to uh, do the legwork on it. But unfortunately, uh, when we did our research, nobody seemed to have that information. So uh, everybody had been there for uh, so long, that's kind of what we're dealing with. It wasn't apples and apples because they had been there so many more years. Okay, um, and so when we hire these people, um, is the pay commensurate upon this individual staying or um, will they potentially just be training here and then leaving to go to a more lucrative position somewhere else? Well, obviously that's always the concern if uh, the wages aren't comparable with, uh, uh, with other areas, could they come here and get some uh, training and, and skills and experience? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it would be no different than what we look at for uh, police officers and, and why it's so important to, to have comparable uh, wages for police officers because we want the people that do come here to stay here. Uh, we uh, take great pride in the environment uh, that we uh, provide, but that's only going to get you so far when you're having to, uh, you know, buy food for your, for your family. And are, do they get, um, are they, do they get a pension? Yes, the, the full-time employees receive a uh, pension as well as health insurance and the other benefits. It, it, is Sandy Daniels looking to retire soon? 
Uh, my understanding is uh, yes, and don't quote me on this. I, I think we're looking at about four or five years. I'm, I'm trying to convince her to stay uh, as long as I'm there, but uh, I think she's on her own timeline. Okay, thank you. If there's no other questions, I'll uh, go ahead. Um, I don't have one on that, but I do have one on the salary page, page two. That's where we're at, right? Yes, ma'am. So um, last year you put in a new initiative for a part-time community service officer at 19 hours a week. Um, for $18,389, which you did not receive. Um, but this year, you also have your part-time CSO um, in the budget for $25,688. So that's an increase of $7,299 over one year's time. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll start it, and uh, you can clean it up. <laughs> so uh, well, what we did, because obviously uh, um, well, we didn't get either of those positions last year, so we were trying to come up with a, a new and in innovative way of addressing both problems. So by combining both responsibilities into one position, uh, we're looking at actually a cost savings uh, rather than hiring two part-timers, hiring one part-timer for right now and having them uh, responsible for both not only the fleet maintenance of the police department, but assisting Carol with some of the ordinance violation as well. Uh, the increase in that uh, uh, would cause us or require us to have them work a few more hours than we anticipated for the 19-hour part-timer for the CSO or fleet maintenance officer. Uh, so uh, we would anticipate that they would just have to work a few more hours each week, uh, but combining both into uh, one position. Okay, that explains it. Thank you. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for uh, page two, unless there's other questions. If not, moving on to overtime. Uh, you'll notice that uh, our overtime uh, we are requesting in the budget is the same as last year. Uh, typically in uh, any given budget preparation process, we will take the money we spent uh, at mid-year and project it out to uh, try and speculate a, uh, an expenditure for the following year. With this last year being what it was, we just weren't able to do that. Uh, so we would anticipate uh, having the uh, same budget uh, as the previous year if this ended up being a typical budget year uh, that would, uh, the expenditure of $406,000 would uh, be sufficient to uh, cover our uh, overtime costs. This last year uh, was just exceptional. I mean, uh, our, our court time was down. Uh, our impact, which is the innovative methods of policing against crime trends, uh, which uh, used to be our gang, uh, uh, gang, uh, gang unit, intervention unit, uh, and trainings down, special events. We didn't have a lot of those that normally would cost us overtime. Uh, our IDOT, which is uh, reimbursable, but some of those we didn't end up uh, actually having because of uh, COVID. And then uh, the typical overtime that uh, we had for District 100, which a lot of that, if not all, is reimbursable as well. Uh, but a lot of that is uh, uh, overtime that didn't get spent that we would anticipate would go back to normal once uh, the res restrictions, the COVID restrictions are lifted. Any questions on page three, overtime? Okay, police pension. Uh, I do not have my uh, equivalent of uh, Captain Shadle here with me. So if you have questions, I'll be more than happy to take them and uh, get you uh, an appropriate answer. Okay, page five, health insurance. I do have a uh, finance director, however, so if you have any questions. 
And, and this is similar to fire. You'll notice a reduction in health insurance uh, down about uh, $45,000, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, so that's a cost savings to the city. You want to touch on dental claims at all, or does anybody have any questions about dental claims or health insurance? <clears throat> Moving on to page seven, uniform allowance. Uh, essentially, we had uh, budgeted for the 43 officers, uh, including uh, the replacement for Sergeant Staples. Uh, it, in addition to that, we would have uh, one additional uh, uniform allowance to uh, account for uh, the COSAP grant if that is uh, approved by the council. Otherwise, the uh, uniform allowance is contractual and it's established by uh, CPI, which I would have to ask Attorney Drella what that stands for. But ultimately, it's uh, less than what the union used to get, which was 4% every year. Any questions on uniform allowance? I have a question. Please proceed, Alderman uh, Frank. Chief, it would be the same question I had for the fire department, according to uniforms. Do they get paid and then reimbursed, or how does that work? No, uh, contractually, they uh, uh, get a, a check uh, cut by the city, and they are required to use that for maintenance and upkeep of their uniforms. Okay, do we at, uh, pay for dispatch at all? Uh, through the 50-50 process uh, uh, through the city county, I, I believe we do have a portion of that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Any other questions on uniform allowance, page seven? Page eight, training. Uh, you're gonna notice that this went up about $9,000. And the, uh, the reason for that is uh, with the uh, legislative uh, changes of fines and fees, uh, July of 2019, the state has noticed that uh, their portion uh, of those fines and fees uh, has been significantly reduced. And the way that they have handled that is uh, previously uh, the state would uh, the police department would send somebody to uh, the academy. And then that academy would bill the state uh, for that training. The state would then pay the academy and the police department or sheriff's department, whatever agency it was, uh, wouldn't have to uh, take that money out of their budget. Well, that's changed. Last year, um, the state decided that uh, the police department or what, uh, whatever uh, agency it uh, involved was going to have to pay for uh, that academy, and then the state would reimburse the department as opposed to the academy. Uh, we're being told uh, now that uh, the police department is going to have to pay for that training out of their budget, and they'll reimburse us if there's any money. So uh, that's significantly, uh, uh, a significant uh, cost increase to all of the area departments uh, including ours, and th that's where that uh, price increase is reflected. Any, any questions on page eight training? Repairs and maintenance equipment. Uh, this uh, line item is uh, generally just addressing uh, um, most of our contractual services over the year. Uh, there's really nothing uh, extraordinary about any of them unless there's uh, questions uh, that I can field. Okay, moving on to page uh, 10 of 20, repairs and maintenance vehicles. Uh, you'll notice that uh, uh, this uh, line item overall has uh, gone down by uh, almost $18,000, and that's reflected in the squad car maintenance. And that is uh, due to uh, almost half of our fleet 
having uh, vehicle war warranties. In addition to, uh, you may remember uh, earlier in the year, uh, we had uh, traded in uh, approximately 13 vehicles and had gotten three new vehicles for uh, um, various reasons for the department training and undercover work, so on and so forth. And so uh, that, that uh, has impacted our uh, maintenance budget. And when looking at uh, what we've had to spend and projecting out what we anticipate spending, uh, we felt that $85,000 was a, uh, a comfortable number that uh, we could operate within. Any questions on any of that? Okay. Moving on to page 11, telephone and utilities. Uh, the top line, Verizon, AT&T, and FirstNet are all cell phone uh, expenditures. Uh, all of our detectives, sergeants, command staff uh, have uh, cell phones that uh, they utilize uh, at the behest of the department. And due to uh, that benefit, the expectation is when we need them, they will answer. So that there is definitely a benefit to the department in uh, an emergency situation. Uh, and uh, we've used it several times and we've uh, yet to have an issue. Uh, local service is our uh, service that our hard line, right, Becky? Correct. That okay. is our hard service. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, repair reprogramming charges um, would be for uh, any uh, radios that if for whatever reason they needed to be reprogrammed, uh, that uh, would come out of that. Uh, Starcom 21 service is the service that Motorola charges us for all of our radios, which uh, uh, are a must-have every year. And then the base station uh, was something that uh, ended up getting rolled into the Starcom service. So we zeroed that one out. The Increase the 22.5 to 25,000 for Starcom is just reflective of uh, their uh, price increase for the year. So uh, there was really uh, nothing uh, we can do about that. That's just Motorola's cost to us. Any questions on page 11? Physical exams. Uh, this is something that is ex uh, extended as a, a contractual issue to uh, the employees uh, and some take advantage of it, uh, some don't. So it, it's something that's budgeted for every year and is uh, uh, there if the city uh, needs it. Any questions on page 12, physical exams? Yeah, are these gonna, is this gonna end up including if there's a fee for, um, COVID vaccinations? I would anticipate that this would be the line item that they would take that expense from. I'm assuming they'll be free, but um, just in case. Yeah, and, and as I uh, previously stated, uh, we have employees that don't take advantage of uh, uh, this benefit, and there's uh, uh, generally some uh, additional monies in there. But if everybody did take advantage of it, that would be a, an appropriate number to budget. <coughs> sure. Okay, if there's no additional questions on page 12, I'll move on to community policing, page 13. This line item is uh, one that we see every year. This is uh, pertaining to our community policing program, something that uh, we're very proud of and has been uh, increasingly more uh, successful in outreach to the community, uh, something we continue to uh, try and think outside the box and uh, engage the community and hopefully uh, uh, be able to uh, bring about uh, perspective, context, and uh, awareness uh, as to what uh, the police department does uh, for our community for and uh, why we do it and it's something that Deputy Chief Wallace uh, uh, Officer Blankenship who's our community policing coordinator has done a fantastic job at doing uh, 
uh, and it's something we try and build upon every year as I spoke on a little bit ago with uh, uh, some of the initiatives we're, we're looking to do. But it, specifically uh, uh, our Citizens Police Academy, that's going to uh, uh, be an expenditure for uh, those academies that we have uh, twice a year, uh, possibly more coming uh, uh, in, in the future and it covers any uh, associated costs with uh, uh, beverages or refreshments for those that are in attendance uh, or if the community policing coordinator needs any type of uh, uh, supplies uh, that would come out of that line item uh, and crossing guard picnic uh, sergeant sergeant spaha has been uh, fantastic at uh, coordinating this crossing guard picnic every year and that's to um, acknowledge and recognize all of the crossing guards from, uh, from all of the different uh, uh, schools uh, throughout Belvedere. And one day we uh, bring them out to uh, uh, the fairgrounds or we used to do uh, other areas within the city and we cook them lunch and we uh, provide uh, prizes and, and just try and give them a day for the, their volunteer and hard work that they've done uh, throughout the school year. Uh, again, like so many other things, uh, it's something we weren't able to do this year, but uh, hopefully we can get back to it next year. Uh, everything I, else? I have a comment. Go ahead, Melissa. And, and I have a question, too. So the crossing guard picnic, I was a crossing guard back in the day at Logan School. We had ours at Sunstrand Park, and it was awesome. Thank you for that. I'm glad that that tradition is um, still in play. I want to go back to the physical exams. Um, do we um, do we cover our female officers' um, breast cancer exams? We'd probably have to take a look at the contract and see um, under our health insurance it would be covered. Um, I'd have to look and see as far as the contract for any type of um, co-pays. Yeah, okay, but that wouldn't be covered under just these physical exam line item for just for free? That would be a co-pay thing, you think? It could be a co-pay. Um, that would be, I'd have to go back and look at that. Um, yeah, I, I don't recall seeing anything in the, uh, the contract that uh, specifically either. provides uh, a benefit for that type of testing, uh, uh, just like uh, any additional testing for uh, our male officers that, that would all be covered under health insurance. Okay, and, th and then what is a PSA test? Um, you have 10 at 185. Uh, I know what it is, what it stands for, I'm going to need help with. It's a blood test, I believe, for your prostate. Prostate can't plan. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Alderman Stevens on that. <laughs> so, we, so we covered prostate testing for men, but not breast cancer um, exams for women? We'll have to look in, we'll have to look at the contract and see. I don't remember seeing specific language on that, but we can take a look. Okay, because it seems if we're covering, um, you know, prostate exams, we should cover um, breast exams. Just yeah. saying. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and I'm not saying you're wrong, uh, but those are things that have been negotiated in the past and probably something that the union would have to uh, address going forward. And it looks like Attorney Drella has something to say. Alderman Freeman, the, there's a list in the contract of the covered examinations. Um, those were asked for by the union, then negotiated agreed to by the city. So if it's not there, it's something that the union didn't ask for. Um, not to say we couldn't include it on our own, um, but that would be why it's missing, because it was not asked for. Um, I don't know if this line also covers the line of duty exams we do from time to time as the need arises. Um, and those are actually non-contractual, but we do have the right to send an officer to an examination when we have some concerns. So those are covered by this slide as well. Okay. Any other questions on the uh, physical exams, page 12? One simple one, if I can. Is this going to include the COVID vaccines? We're going to 
possibly get? Or does that not cover the COVID? Yeah, and uh, I would anticipate that this is the line item that would be taken out of if uh, uh, that's something that ended up being a cost to the employee, but well, we don't know, one, if there will be a cost, and two, um, how much that's going to be. Thank you. Yep. Uh, moving up back to community policing. Was there any questions on that? Okay. Uh, moving to page 14, canine program expenses. The only addition to that line item would be the canine tracker account access. What that is is software. Uh, that uh, we purchased uh, in order to keep track of all of the canine activity. Uh, the old software that we used to use was outdated, archaic, and just extremely difficult to, uh, uh, to try and uh, get information from and, and utilize. But, uh, of course, uh, with every uh, software anymore, there's a licensing fee every year, and this one is uh, $144. So. Licensing fee for every year for that software. Any questions on the canine program expense? Sex offender state disbursements is money that the uh, department collects and then uh, distributes to uh, the uh, state treasurer, state police, and attorney general as uh, outlined by statute. So this is not something that is uh, an expense for the police department. We get the money from the sex offender when they register, and then we are responsible for the disbursement of that money to uh, the appropriate uh, agencies. If there's no questions on page 15, uh, page 16, office supplies essentially is just what it sounds, uh, office supplies, pens, paper, notepads, uh, thumb drives, which tends to drive our uh, office supply costs uh, way up uh, with the amount of video that uh, we have to uh, take, either recording different uh, interviews or downloading security video, um, recovering uh, security video, downloading witness interviews, uh, photo lineups, things like that. We, we utilize thumb drives and they're not cheap. Any questions? Yes, Alderman Porter. I'm assuming this one's gonna go up because of the body cam and all the things you have to go through with uh, preserving body cam video? Uh, no, that's not going to be addressed in this particular line item. That's going to be something that is going to be handled through IT and through the uh, PSB budget uh, because that's going to go on to servers. So uh, that video is then downloaded onto those servers. So anytime that they need to address additional space, IT has to uh, purchase servers, which uh, are going to be a, a lot more expensive than uh, thumb drives. Uh, but uh, yeah, our, our thumb drive usage uh, has increased when we have to provide discovery to uh, uh, the state's attorney's office. Uh, we have to put uh, uh, squad car video on thumb drives a lot of times, uh, a lot of this different uh, uh, security video, we have to make copies and we put those on thumb drives and all of that uh, uh, by statute we're obligated to do. Any other questions for office supplies? Gas and oil uh, has uh, remained the same from the, the previous year uh, in looking at what our uh, expenditure is and projecting uh, what uh, we think it's, uh, our needs are going to be. Uh, we uh, came to the usage of approximately 45,000 gallons and at a uh, cost estimate of $2.50 per gallon, uh, that was the total that we came up with. So and if uh, one of those two uh, variables changes, uh, that uh, could uh, 
directly affect obviously the uh, the end cost, but uh, you know that is our uh, educated uh, estimate at this point. Any questions on that? Yeah, Alderman Ayrton. Please proceed. Hey, hey, Chief. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Hey, Chief. Just to back up for a second, um, talking about the cameras and the servers. Uh, do we know? Are the county? Are they going to utilize cameras as well? Uh, body cams. Alderman Brereton, you referring to body cams? Yes, correct. Yeah, not at this point. Uh, it looks like uh, the new legislation is going to require them for all of the agencies in Illinois. Uh, so uh, I believe that uh, is, uh, we're looking at that implementation uh, approximately three years from now. Uh, so uh, there's no information that I have uh, at this point where they are looking to uh, implement them any sooner than that. But that's not specifically a uh, conversation that the sheriff or I have uh, uh, had recently. Okay, thanks, Chief. I just didn't know if any, if we knew. No, uh, but in terms of the cost of those servers, uh, in talking to IT, uh, they had estimated over the next five years roughly it costing uh, five thousand dollars in additional storage, which when we looked at other body camera uh, companies, their storage uh, solutions, which primarily were the cloud, yeah, you're talking tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So in comparison, it's significantly cheaper to keep that storage in-house. Okay, thanks, Chief. Welcome. Moving to page 18 of 20, operating supplies. Uh, these are all day-to-day uh, -day, uh, supplies that the police department uh, could potentially need. Uh, these are generally consumables and is a, uh, uh, an estimate based off of uh, what we've used in previous years and uh, up to uh, the point that we began the budget process. Yeah, you'll see ammunition uh, is, as it always will be, uh, one of the largest amounts on that uh, line item. And it's uh, just due to the cost of the ammunition and uh, our dedication to training. Questions or comments? Any questions on operating supplies? Okay. If there's no questions, move to page 19, miscellaneous expenses. Uh, yeah, these are... Uh, going to be year-to-year -year, uh, expenses that uh, uh, are going to be roughly the same. It looks like from 20 to 21, uh, there was a jump uh, primarily due to uh, uh, moving the uh, drug ops uh, into uh, this line item. I would have to do additional uh, uh, research as to find out why we decided to do that that way, but ultimately, uh, last year, we uh, revised that number because uh, drug operations for the city used to be $15,000 a year uh, that the, the city would provide for uh, our narcotics investigations. With the uh, merging uh, with the county into the Metro Narcotics Unit, uh, we were able to uh, drop that down to $8,000, uh, almost uh, half. Any questions on that page from miscellaneous expenses? Uh, equipment, page 20 of 20. On here, uh, you will see uh, 
looks like roughly most of the expenditures are going to be either less or uh, the same uh, as we've requested in previous years because the uh, equipment itself hasn't changed with a few exceptions. Uh, one exception is at the very top, uh, breathalyzer for our patrol. Uh, our current breathalyzer is almost 20 years old and uh, about a year and a half ago it started making some very strange noises. noises. What our breathalyzer is is uh, uh, what our officers utilize to uh, detect the breath alcohol concentration in either a DUI uh, offender or a minor that we uh, suspect has been uh, consuming alcohol. Uh, about a year and a half ago when it started making those noises, uh, I had Deputy Chief Wallace uh, check with the state, uh, have their uh, repair person come check it out, uh, which they did. Uh, they were able to uh, uh, fix it in what they deemed to be a uh, short-term uh, Band-Aid and said that probably over the next couple years uh, you're going to need to be uh, replacing the unit. Uh, given the extent of uh, what a new one would cost, we figured we'd write it out. Uh, it has since uh, started making that noise again and uh, uh, appears to be time that uh, we need to replace it. Uh, unfortunately, state bid uh, has uh, a new one at uh, roughly 8,500. Uh, we've budgeted 9,000 because by the time the budget process goes through, uh, it's been my experience that a lot of those uh, expenditures do uh, tend to increase in costs uh, even slight. So uh, 9,000 should be something that uh, uh, we should be able to um, anticipate uh, costing for a uh, new breathalyzer. Uh, in addition to that, there was a slight increase from 1,000 to 1,400 for electronic headsets. Uh, that's just uh, uh, an increase in the cost of the headsets that uh, uh, we have to purchase for our SWAT team. And then at the very bottom, um, uh, we've uh, uh, put in a new uh, budget request, expenditure request for chairs for our uh, detectives. Five chairs at uh, approximately $280 for a total cost of $1,400. Uh, the, uh, the, the chairs they currently have um, have difficulty even staying upright. Uh, some of them no, uh, no longer have any, uh, if it was leather at one point, uh, no longer is. And uh, we've gotten uh, the, our money's worth out of the current chairs and uh, they have uh, reached their end of life. So. Uh, the remainder of the equipment that you would see uh, for the most part would be uh, equipment that we would anticipate um, needing to be replaced at some point. Uh, we're not saying that uh, it's something we would have to buy, but if uh, ultimately uh, some of this equipment uh, failed us, we would have something budgeted so we would be able to replace it with uh, uh, minimal interruption in op operations. Any questions on page 20 of 20? I have multiple questions on this page. Please proceed, Alderman Freeman. So cheap. Um, last year, when we got things, they were crossed off, such as a very desk. Um, and then last year and this year, barrier system, because we purchased that stuff. Um, so I'm seeing things like um, computer replacements for investigations, two at 1100, which we also had last year. Um, actually, we placed three for investigations last year. Um, and then security, um, squad security drawers, two at 1750, and we actually replaced two last year at 1750. Um, then under patrol, we also have a con another computer replacement and an iPad and tablet. Um, and then last year, we, for the SWAT team, got night vision monocular and a monocular adapter, which um, now they're on here again this year. Um, the bipods are actually crossed off, but um, then under administration last year, 
We um, also replaced two computers at $1,100, and they're also on here again. And we also replaced three chairs um, for administration last year at $300 each. And um, now you're looking for three more chairs for administration and one chair for patrol at um, a whopping $600 for one chair. <clears throat> yeah. So are we like double, double, triple dipping some of this stuff or has some of this stuff already been purchased and we can cross it off? No, ma'am. Actually, none of the above. Uh, so uh, uh, given the financial uncertainty of uh, this uh, fiscal budget year, we really haven't purchased anything that we had requested in last year's budget process. Uh, there's been... Continue on with what you said. Um, looking at the line items so far that they've spent in this budget year, they've only spent $14,500. So they've only spent 22% of the budget in this line item. Yeah, and uh, Alderman Freeman, just to, to give you an idea, for some of the uh, pieces of equipment that we need that are uh, very expensive, like the night vision monocular, that is for one unit. And our entire team needs it, but uh, I understand that to ask for, you know, that much equipment in one budget year uh, isn't necessarily uh, uh, responsible for the taxpayer, so I try and piecemeal it, but uh, budget process by budget process uh, with the intent of reaching the total amount, uh, uh, you know, in multiple years. So, yes, it is very true. You may see uh, the same piece of equipment uh, multiple years in a row, but it's because we need multiple pieces of equipment and I'm just trying to uh, uh, minimize the impact uh, to the city in terms of uh, tax dollars spent. Okay, that's great. I just question it because we don't, um, we don't always get to see what you guys buy. It's um, you know, it's just that it's in the budget, so you guys just go ahead and get it um, because it's been budgeted for. So um, that's why I'm just wondering if, if some of this stuff got purchased and you just need more or if, uh, obviously, you didn't purchase it. So um, that's why I question it. Yeah, no, no problem. And, uh, yeah, I mean, another good example is the Motorola Starcom radios uh, for if you remember the last couple of years, I've uh, come to city council and requested uh, uh, the four that we've uh, budgeted for because ultimately we need 43. So, you know, that could be a decade uh, worth of budget process. So. Snow okay. has a question. Go ahead, Alderman Snow. So when it comes to the breathalyzer, um, we only have one for the whole police department or is this one of four that's gone bad no the police department has one breathalyzer it's uh, contained in our holding uh, area okay so it's this is not the breathalyzer that would be used in the field or we don't have them for the field uh, we have portable uh, breath uh, portable breathalyzers uh, that our officers have uh, uh, but uh, they are uh, considerably different the breathalyzer that we are requesting is certified by the state and can actually be used for court purposes where the portable breathalyzers uh, can only be used uh, in obtaining or establishing uh, uh, probable cause. Okay, thank you much. Welcome. Are there any more questions on the equipment page, page 20? Uh, moving on to uh, capital expenses, uh, we, uh, the police department uh, is bare bones here. Uh, no surprise, we're requesting uh, additional squad cars. Uh, we uh, uh, requested uh, uh, four or five last year, and ultimately because of the financial situation, um, well, we were able to uh, replace two of them. And we are looking at... multiple, multiple uh, squad cars. We have 
one 2012, two 2013s, 2000, two 2014s uh, that uh, we're, we're going to be looking at uh, potentially replacing. Uh, again, uh, the time that uh, the budget process happens and ultimately uh, when they're approved and we can actually order them, uh, some of the squad cars may uh, change in terms of the ones we're looking to uh, um, rotate out of the fleet. It all depends on if there's uh, additional maintenance problems with some of them, and that's kind of a fluid situation that we have to keep continue to monitor. Uh, the goal uh, previously was to uh, get as many vehicles as we could, uh, as quick as we could, uh, under the uh, warranty. Uh, there has been some changes with that in terms of uh, uh, working with the dealership. Uh, the um, the company that provides the warranties uh, now look at an hourly basis uh, on a vehicle as opposed to mileage, which for our police cars is significantly different because our police cars do run a lot more than uh, just your average everyday uh, uh, vehicle. Uh, so that's probably something going forward that may not be realistic for us to uh, uh, continue to consider. Uh, however, uh, we do uh, currently have uh, 11 vehicles that uh, are under warranty and any additional vehicle that uh, the city's uh, uh, allowed to uh, uh, purchase for the police department, you know, uh, adds to that uh, warranty process. And uh, I think we've uh, demonstrated with the reduction in uh, the maintenance costs that we're requesting that the warranties really do make an impact. Uh, we're able to rotate those uh, uh, problem vehicles out and ultimately replace them with vehicles that uh, for you know, five years uh, uh, are going to be covered in terms of any major uh, mechanical expenses. Any questions on the capital page? Uh, without uh, any additional questions, that concludes the police department's uh, budget presentation. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chief Woody. So, <clears throat> moving on to.